Hi friends, I'm here today to share the process of painting a portrait of young Queen Elizabeth. This is my tribute. I spent the entire weekend locked in my studio and it gave me some space to focus on the work as well as reflect how quickly the world is changing. It might be that all the recent events combined triggered my anxiety a little too much because now, no matter how much I draw and paint, I just don't see any progress in my works. And this portrait, however, enthusiastic I was about it at the start only showed me what not to do anymore and I will tell you why because I want to sort of break down the process and share my thoughts I never planned to do this portrait but it just so happened that I couldn't focus on much else but with the decision to paint the queen also came to life my worst portrait nightmare I actually had my fair share of portrait commissions and I stopped doing them a couple of years ago for numerous reasons but the worst thing about creating someone's portrait for me was the pressure of being accurate and not just on the proportion level but to capture the personality which should always be purpose of such artwork so this portrait came with so many challenges as you can imagine but the first nightmare was to get the sketch right i realized while sketching this that i was being stupid when i let this slip my drawing practice and what i mean is that i deliberately satisfied myself with being about 90% accurate when using references but now I think that this frivolity of mine has done a lot of harm and I will have to seriously start sketching well-known faces a lot more just to be able to tell immediately that my proportions are incorrect. I spent about two hours on the sketch before I started to search for corrections because it just still felt a little off and when I couldn't detect any from looking at the portrait for so long I just decided to compare the sketch and my reference in photo Photoshop. You can do this easily by laying a photo of your sketch over the reference photo and then lowering its opacity. You might have to rotate a little and resize but it helped me find those mistakes effectively. I think I got the portrait up to 95% accurate proportionally but if you still don't feel like I managed to capture the face I don't blame you but this is the best I can do today. I like to use a darker graphite pencil to emphasize certain lines in the final stage of the drawing. It just makes the sketch look more tidy and it gives me better guide for where important areas are. Sometimes it would be more helpful if the sketch was more detailed than this and contained more pencil lines but since I work with such transparent medium my sketches often look like this and only contain outlines so that the white paper inside those lines can still shine through my transparent paint layers. My intention was to paint her skin as smooth as possible and I don't know why I decided that because it ended up being the one thing that I dislike about the portrait and it took so much time unnecessarily. I used to love this technique as it can be used to create such perfect result with watercolor and it works like this. I always wet the entire area. Here it's her face and her neck and then I insert paint inside the wet area which creates a soft effect. It is best to work on a tilted surface to avoid having a drop of water in any particular area. When you create a tilt then all of your excess water always moves towards the bottom edge of of the wet area and it cannot create blooms or irregularities that you wouldn't like within this watercolor wash so you can get gorgeous seamless gradients this way but it takes a lot of time to put on multiple layers and dry every layer before the next one is up my paper actually isn't perfect for this technique i'm using my canzon moulin Durois, which is a 300 gsm cotton paper cold pressed and it allows for lifting of the pigment quite easily which 
which should be indication that layering will not be easy. You can layer on this paper and the more layers you put up, the harder it is to lift the pigment as each layer preserves those previous layers. I also learned that when I'm using very soft brushes, it makes it easier to layer paint on this kind of paper. And when I want to lift the pigment, I need a stiffer brush to help me achieve that. I have switched brushes quite a lot in this portrait as I try to paint more details than I normally do. I only used three colors to paint the entire portrait and that was quinacridone gold, permanent alizarin crimson and paints gray. I only used two more paints for the background but that I will mention later. And the living nightmare was <laughs> the eyes that I just couldn't get them quite right. And that took a couple of hours. I kept going back and forth trying to fix them before I was satisfied. As I was painting, I turned on The Crown on the Netflix. I watched the series before about a year ago, but for the second time now, I liked it even more. And my favorite episode was called Assassin, and it was about the creation of Churchill's portrait. It was a very strong, that one. The story was about an artist, he was called Sutherland, who was commissioned to create a portrait for Churchill's 80th birthday. And since this was a gift, Churchill couldn't dismiss miss it and had to pose for that portrait. Those sittings provided impactful interactions between that artist and Churchill, so they talked a lot and those scenes were very emotional. They made me think of how different and distant it is to draw and paint people from photos, people that you don't really know, and how hard it is to capture any emotion that way. But what was interesting about the story was the Churchill's reaction to the portrait when it was finished, and I don't want to spoil this for you so if you didn't watch it yet or didn't read uh, about the story this is a fair warning and so he actually burned down the painting even though according to others it was very accurate and even a masterpiece because it captured the truth and sadly all the things that Churchill had inner conflict with and didn't want to see himself often it's very hard to look in the mirror so that episode was really about self-reflection more than about the painting but it motivated me to draw and paint more from life and work on capturing the essence rather than creating pieces that are somewhat decorative, if that makes any sense. I think I stopped painting commissioned portraits also because of the distance between the photo and reality. Oftentimes people that commissioned me were relatives or friends of the person they asked me to portray and I don't think a painted portrait of your friend might be the best gift, especially as a surprise because not everybody likes their own face and even those that like their face they often have a certain feature about themselves which they might be very sensitive about and if the artist doesn't know and accidentally emphasizes that feature then you've just given your friend their worst nightmare on a paper and paid for it. I never liked doing that as my job but it paid my bills before I opened the studio and it was the one thing that people were always asking for and so it provided certain security at the start of a very insecure art career. By the way painting babies and pets is always safe, everyone is happy and those subjects, they never get offended. But as for adults, well, I remember painting an aunt of my husband upon request of his family for her birthday. When I arrived to her house to take the picture for the portrait, I already could tell that she hated the idea, but neither of us was free to cancel the whole transaction. She couldn't refuse a gift and I couldn't refuse the favor. She only asked asked me to be kind to her face and make her pretty and young. But that was a little too much for my imagination and especially I found her very pretty and charming for her age. And so I painted what I saw and as truthfully as I could. Everyone said that the portrait was quite accurate but she locked it somewhere anyway. I suppose the problem was like it always is, to look at your own face and see anything but flaws. Oh well. 
that time I at least had the opportunity to take the picture myself but oftentimes I was only sent some downloaded Facebook profile pics or old black and white pictures to create a portrait from and it just felt like somewhat of an impossible request and a too high of a mountain to climb. On the other hand, I also had very fulfilling experience with commissioned portraiture in the past. I was asked to paint eyes of a brother that was deceased for his sister once and she didn't have more than a few older photographs to provide me with but that's why she let me have my artistic freedom to experiment a little. When I completed the painting she cried and thanked me many times and I'm sure that the painting is cherished until this day because that was a reminder of a beloved person. I guess what I'm trying to say is that portraiture is very hard and can be powerful. One needs to be deeply perceptive to get it right but it also is not enough and the reactions we get will differ based on people's different associations and emotions so it is not always reflecting on our art skill and I don't think I will ever get tired of trying. Let's paint the background. I knew it must be dark, but I struggled to decide on a proper color. Here I stopped using minimal palette and opted out for granulating shadow violet by Daniel Smith and also used Payne's Gray. If you tried Payne's Gray from different brands, they differ very much. The one from Winsor Newton that I used quite often is bluish and this one from Sennelier in contrast is very deep cool gray color, which I thought was very fitting to combined with the shadow violet and I also added delft blue by Schminke to her dress and into the background because I realized that I did not use the proper shade of blue in my first layer and it just wasn't fitting very well. So I soaked the entire background in clear water and then kept on adding colors to it to achieve this expressive and blended look. I maybe should have masked the face beforehand, it is always so risky to do it like this. One wrong move and you have a blue stain all over her face. I guess I just was a bit tired but I could have used at least a protective piece of paper or masking tape but luckily no major mistakes happened and the porcelain skin survived this flood. This is the fun part of any painting that I'm always kind of looking forward, especially after focusing too hard on blended shading of the face. I even added a second layer here with drips and splatters that went above the shoulder to lighten up the portrait a little bit. I don't know why I felt so stressed while painting this. I guess I didn't want to offend anyone if the portrait wasn't capturing everything they felt the queen deserved, but I ended up disliking the portrait myself in the process because it just wasn't done as freely as I could have been and I could achieve so much more while being more expressive. After this one, I'll have to dive into my sketchbook for a while and pick subjects that will forgive me any kind of experiment. Okay, the story of the last material I used is that I bought these tools years ago and never ever touched them. Sadly, I can't say this is the only expensive and untouched material in my studio. It is an acrylic adhesive and a 24 karat golden leaf and I never thought any painting of mine is worth wasting this, but today it was like if I don't use it here for the crown, then I might as well throw it away. It was the perfect opportunity. So the label said red
ready to gild on in 15 minutes and I tested it on a piece of paper beforehand just to make sure that it works and then I painted the details of the crown with the adhesive and waited 15 minutes before adding golden leaf to it quite clumsily but it worked and the effect is beautiful it is so highly reflective that when I put the painting on the wall it shines quite strongly and from many angles it was fun too and now that I know how to use it I will try to find more purpose for the remaining leaf I guess that's it for this process and I will see you soon. In the meantime, here's the video in which I walk you through my process in real time. So enjoy and bye!